The Avengers Age of Ultron. I promised that I would come back and do a spoiler review for this movie, so I am here to do just that. Let's talk about the very beginning of the movie, right? Where you see the Avengers going after Hydra and Loki's scepter. Not only did I like this because of its... It's literally taking place right after the setup that was in the after credit scene of Captain America the First Avenger. Where we saw them with it and saw them doing experiments. But it was just a great fucking way to start the movie. So much action right out the gate. I loved it. And... Uh, one complaint that I have seen people talk about in their reviews online, even Chris Duckman talked about it, uh, was Ultron. Ultron's story, Ultron as a villain. Was he too rushed? Was his character developed? Well, I mean, in one sense, how how is his character not well developed? I mean, he's a robot. What more do you need to know? I think we got the the basics on him as a villain, as a character. I will say that going into the movie, I expected him to be a lot more serious and threatening. And sure, he was threatening, but he was a lot more sarcastic. And that's what I appreciated the most out of the, out of the character. James Spader, as the voice, did a fantastic job where not only do you have scenes where he does get pissed off and freaked out, like when he cut that guy's arm off of anger but even the moments where you could tell he was created or that he came from Tony Stark he just he had that sarcastic sense of humor he was fun to watch uh, so but was his initial creation in turn to evil rushed sure I'll agree with that I'm willing to say that it it, it could have been maybe two or three extra scenes where where we just set up and establish the fact that, hey, you know, he started off good, but then turned evil. It does seem like as soon as Tony creates him, or as soon as he does get created, he's evil. <laughs> and it makes Tony Stark's whole big plan for protecting the world seem pretty dumb at that point. I also want to talk about the twins. Because I really enjoyed them, you know, for for two characters who were being introduced in this movie, along with all these other characters that we know and that we love and that we feel like we've known, it was probably hard to establish them, to set up their backstory, and to make it seem plausible that they would begin the movie as villains, and by their motivation, and then also by their turn by them joining the Avengers, becoming good guys, because there's a point where, especially Scarlet Witch, she does some fucked up things to the team, to the members, fucks with their head, causes them to just do some of the most heinous things to each other, that you go, how is she going to be redeemed? But I feel like they pulled it off. I really liked Elizabeth Olsen as Scarlet Witch. I thought she was great. And... I want to talk about like the moments where she did get into their heads and that's where we got some some backstory and deep character stuff with each Avenger. It's something that I don't know how <sighs> Joss Whedon shoved into this movie but made it seem organic and, and like for example Steve Rogers and his scene where he quote had that last dance with Peggy Carter, but then it was all taken away from him. Just the reminder of what he, he doesn't have, can't have, and the life that he left behind. And his one true love, he'll never have that. Like, that That was that was sad. I almost was trying to figure out what was more sad between that or, and I, and I think this wins, Black Widow, her past, Natasha Romanoff, just everything that goes on with, they call it the Red Room, and just ever since she was a kid, she was trained to be a cold-blooded assassin, a killer. And and the surgeries that they that they did on her, almost against her will, just getting that sense of her backstory, I almost don't know how else you work it into the story without feeling forced. But because of Scarlet Witch's power, it brings it out in the forefront. It even it even forces Black Widow to deal 
with that past. And I think that too was what made her romance with the Hulk that much stronger, seeing her that vulnerable. Also, I, I should mention the Hulk losing his shit because of Scarlet Witch. Sure, we don't see what causes the Hulk to be this angry, like what did she put in his head, what did she make him see, what's his biggest fear that he just raged out like that in the city. We didn't have to see it though, just Tony Stark trying to stop this guy, even with the Hulkbuster suit, it wasn't enough. And, and... I mean, it was chaos, it was destruction, and it's almost what you want to see from the Hulk, right? As much as the Hulk is the hero, as much as Bruce Banner is a sympathetic character that you don't want to see go through that much heartache and guilt, that's what the character is, and that's what makes him that much more fascinating. And seeing the Hulk smash as much things as he can was awesome. I have to admit that. And fuck, the fact that he leaves Black Widow at the end of this movie, it's sad, it's tragic, but it again shows what this character is all about, how this is his his life, his destiny. He's forced to be alone. I honestly, I would love, this is the perfect setup, I would love to see a standalone Hulk movie. I mean, I've said this before, I made a video dedicated to saying I want my Hulk movie now, but just seeing where his character ends off, I, I think it would be perfect. Unfortunately, it's not a part of the plans anytime soon, but you never know, it could happen. The, the Thor Ragnarok stuff was surprisingly pretty heavy in this movie, not just from the flashes that Thor got in that dream, but then he even goes off with uh, Stellan Starsgard, and they find this cave of water that lets him go back to the dream. And not only was it setting up Ragnarok, where you know you see Idris Elba talking about the end of times, and Thor is going to be the reason why all all of these people die and go to hell. It made me pretty interested to see if they're actually going to do hell, Hades in this movie, but not just that, there was a lot of Infinity War, the gems, Thanos, like a lot of that seemed like it was either tied in, either setting up Infinity War, or maybe that too was going to be a part of Ragnarok. Who knows, either way it did make me look forward to it. I read recently that Loki was going to have a scene that got cut off, I don't know if that was going to be in the Thor Flashes scene. Or what? In fact, I heard that uh, the movie, the original cut Joss Whedon made, was like three and a half hours long. If that much stuff got cut out, damn. I don't know how he still made such a great, fun, awesome action movie if he had to cut out that much story. I hear there's also going to be a director's cut. I cannot wait to see a director's cut, even if it's just three hours long. Hell, fuck it, if James Cameron can have four hours of Avatar, why the fuck can we not get a three-hour Avengers movie? I would not complain, even seeing it the second time in the theater, I was thinking, you know, I wouldn't mind if this was just a little bit longer. I really wouldn't. Speaking of more character stuff, Hawkeye. I mentioned this in my review, but I have to say that not only do I like Jeremy Renner's performance and how much they gave him just as a character made him feel important and, and special to the team but him having that safe house him having that family his wife played by Linda Cartinelli which was a great casting for such a small part I like her as an actress so that was cool seeing him his family his kids and the fact that this is something that Fury's kept under the books for him and and he had a plan to retire call me an idiot Call me global, but when they were setting up him and his wife, and it was a whole like, okay, this is the last mission. After this, I'm done. I'm coming home, and he had a baby on the way. You're just like, okay, fuck, Hawkeye's gonna die. There's no doubt about it. This is completely almost hitting you over the face, saying, this character is gonna die. But luckily, he didn't die, and I was very happy to see him get a happy ending, a nice send off, if this is the last movie with him. The end battle, I don't know how to describe this. How much was going on? Ultron literally lifting this city, the big huge land, off the ground, and it was hovering over, and the Avengers not only 
trying to save all those people, evacuating the town and 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 the shield helicarrier coming in and saving people. I know people are going to say, well, see, this is why Marvel and the Avengers are better than DC and Man of Steel, because you actually see the heroes saving people. I don't want to get into a debate <laughs> about which one did it better, but I will say that it is good to see the Avengers saving people, that it's not all about smashing things, destroying things, that saving the people is almost most important to what's going on here. Even the moment where Captain America and Black Widow were saying, you know what, uh, we're, we're almost willing to die to make sure these people go off. Like, we don't even care about ourselves getting off this rock. We care more about these people getting off. So that, I think, was a great way to do it. The, the army of robots that Ultron had was insane. The one shot that almost rivals the shot in the first Avengers movie where you see the whole team back to back and they're facing the aliens and the cameras going around in circle. Awesome. Iconic, right? Well, this one, you have a similar shot and you see the whole group smashing robots and just in action using their powers. Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver in the shot with them. It was very cool. It was very awesome. You can't help but not geek out during that. Uh, and, and before I get to the end, I forgot to mention uh, the the Black Panther sort of Easter egg. I mean, it wasn't really an Easter egg because it was almost in your face. They literally went to Africa. I, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to the Black Panther movie. And I love that they're setting up these characters, these little moments, these little story points that you know will come back up. Some people will say that it was too much or that it feels like too much of setting up different movies and not progressing the main story of this movie. Look, at this point, we know that so many more movies are coming. Why not take the time to stop and let us fans know what's to come, even if it's just for a couple minutes? Uh, at the very end, you see the brand new S.H.I.E.L.D. with Fury, Maria Hill, a bunch of people working at this base in upstate New York. And that's the moment where I stopped and said, you see, this is why Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is pointless. Because now the movie universe is setting up this brand new, big, high-level S.H.I.E.L.D. They're at least trying to regrow there. So what's the show going to do? I know you could say that I'm judging before I see the episode of the aftermath of it, but it's just it seems like that show doesn't really connect well with what they're doing in the movies. Anyways, last but not least, let's talk about that end credit scene, right? Thanos! <laughs> I I can't tell you how awesome it was to see him grab that glove. Such a simple and quick scene, but it says so much. It's almost like there's nothing new in the scene. There's nothing that we didn't already know in the scene. But it was what we wanted to see. We wanted to see Thanos grab the glove and literally say he will do this himself. He is next as far as what threat the Avengers will face next. I should probably mention the fact that at the end of this movie, the Avengers is a, is a brand new team. It's, it's, okay, the Falcon, War Machine, Scarlet Witch... Black Widow, Captain America, Vision, fuck, I haven't talked about Vision. Vision might be the most fascinating character in this movie. Pretty much because the way he gets created by Ultron, Ultron wanting to put his, his consciousness into like a living body, but through all the events, Thor's uh, vision of the future he stops that from happening and we get vision and I almost wonder because when I went with my friend she had no idea who vision was and she almost couldn't comprehend what he was and what he represents and it was hard to almost explain to somebody who doesn't know anything about vision and trying to say like well in the comics he he was this and he's a part of the Avengers and, and, and he's a trusted loyal character that you just you know right I mean if you know him you just know him it's not that weird but how many people watching this movie who don't know vision 
how many people knew what the fuck was going on when his character came in? Is that explained enough? I don't know. I don't know how to answer that because, again, for me, I know Vision, and I just thought it was cool. Paul Bettany as this character. Honestly, there couldn't have been a perfect, a more perfect casting. He's great. Just what we got of him in this movie, what he thinks of humans, and what he thought of Ultron. He didn't necessarily disagree with him, but he wasn't going to let humanity die. I just, I love everything about the character. I can't wait to see where he goes next, especially because he's a part of the Avengers now, especially because he is the only other person or thing able to lift Thor's hammer. How great was that? And, and Scarlet Witch is a part of the group. Quicksilver dies in this movie. Who expected that? Who expected that? Again, I thought, everyone probably thought Hawkeye was going to die. And then Quicksilver gets shot up to, to fuck. And he's gone. He's done. Completely shocking. I, I kind of like this new Avengers group. I mean, look. Um, are, when you look at them in the lineup, are they as impressive looking? Or, or, or you know, do they give you that same goosebumps feeling that the first one did obviously not but in the comics the avengers is a constantly changing ever-growing group of heroes that they had to do it they had to do it and i think it's it's more than cool more than interesting to see some of these other heroes get their chance to to, to prove themselves and show off how how great they can be as heroes so there you go i think i think marvel is doing this perfectly. Next year we get Civil War. How fucking awesome is that? Uh, it's a little unfortunate that that Spider-Man scene that leaked online we thought was real. At least I thought it was real. It looked very cool. I would have liked to have seen a glimpse of Spider-Man as as soon as it would be. I just can't wait to see what this character is going to be like in the Marvel Universe. But still... I love this movie. Obviously, I, I rated it better than sex for a reason. And I still hold true to that. Anyways, guys, that's spoiler talk. I hope I didn't miss anything. Uh, let me know in the comments below what do you think of this movie in a spoiler-like discussion. Let me know if I missed anything. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later. <laughs>